Hi, hello, at magandang araw ulit. Itutuloy lang natin ang discussion natin about carbohydrates and we'll focus on complex carbohydrates. Last time, pinag-usapan natin kung ano ang functions ng carbohydrates as energy storage, structural, and also as component ng nucleic acid, as well as uses ng carbohydrates such as metabolic precursor, component ng cell walls and cell membranes, as well as participation nito in recognition. Also, diniscuss rin natin ang classification ng carbohydrate, which is yung monosaccharides at disaccharides with the examples of glucose, maltose, fructose, sucrose, and etc. So now, pag-uusapan natin ang oligosaccharides. So, ang oligosaccharides ay short chain of monosaccharides and composed siya of less than 20 monosaccharides. Ang disaccharide can be also considered as an oligosaccharide. So, an example would be maltotriose. So, ang maltotriose is composed of glucose polymer unit. So, if additional glucose units will be added at mag-exceed ng 20, then consider na siya bilang polysaccharide. So, now we'll go to polysaccharides. Ang tawag din sa polysaccharides ay glycans at polymer siya of medium to high molecular weight. Karamihan ng carbohydrates in nature ay nag occur as polysaccharides. At nagkakaiba rin siya in terms of identity ng recurring monosaccharide units, length ng kanilang chain, types ng bonds na naglilink dun sa units, at also yung degree ng branching. So may dalawang types ng polysaccharides. Una ay ang homopolysaccharides na nagkocontain ng single type na monomer at heteropolysaccharides na nagkocontain ng residue ng more than one type ng monosaccharide. Yung homopolysaccharides ay pwede rin mag-serve as storage forms of monosaccharides bilang fuels habang iba naman as a structural component. So we'll talk about homopolysaccharides as fuels and an example would be starch. Yung starch ay nakikita natin sa plant cells and nag-occur siya intracellularly as large clusters or as granules. May dalawang types ng polymers amylose and amylopectin. So, baka magtaha kayo. Paano naging homopolysaccharide yung starch? May dalawang types ng polymer siya. Well, yung amylose ay nagkocontain ng long and branch chains of glucose residues connected by alpha-1,4 linkages. While yung amylopectin ay highly branch ng successive glucose residues na connected by alpha-1,4 and yung branch points naman niya na nag occur every 24 to 30 residues ay may alpha-1,6 linkages. So basically, yung amylose at amylopectin are made up of glucose. So homopolysaccharide pa rin siya. Next naman natin is yung glycogen. Yung glycogen yung main storage polysaccharide sa animal cells at nag-occur din siya intracellularly as large clusters or granules like starch and polymer siya of alpha-1,4 linked subunits ng glucose na may alpha-1,6 linked branches. Mas branched siya sa starch and mas compact siya. Yung highly branched structure ng ating glycogen ay nagpe-permit ng rapid glucose release from glycogen stores. Like for example, sa muscles natin during exercise. Abundant din ang glycogen sa liver at present din siya sa skeletal muscle. Another example would be dextrans. Ang dextrans ay bacterial and yeast polysaccharide at made up of alpha-1,6 linked poly D-glucose. An example would be yung dental plaque. Formed siya by bacteria growing on the surface of the teeth, which is rich in dextrin, which is a homopolysaccharide. So, another one would be homopolysaccharides used in structure. So, an example would be cellulose. Cellulose is a fibrous, tough, water-insoluble substance na nakikita natin sa cell walls ng plants. The stalk, the stem... Basically, 
sa plant. So, isa siyang linear and branch homopolysaccharide with beta configuration. So, yung every other glucose na makikita mo sa ating cellulose is flipped over dahil sa beta linkage niya na nagkakos ng kakaibang structure sa kanya and nagkakos sa cellulose chains para maging straight at rigid and packed with a crystalline arrangement in thick bundles like sa illustration natin on the right. Karamihan ng mga hayop cannot digest cellulose. This is because they lack enzymes na nag-hydrolyze or nagda-digest ng beta linkages. Yung mga enzymes na nag-hydrolyze ng alpha linkages sa starch ay hindi kaya mag-hydrolyze ng beta linkages sa cellulose. An exception would be uh, cows or yung grazing animals natin. Sila yung may kakayahang mag-hydrolyze ng ating cellulose. Another thing would be all wood fungi have the enzyme cellulase. Siya yung nagbe-break ng beta-1 for glycosidic bonds sa cellulose. So, para sa mga fungi like mushroom, yung wood yung nagiging source nila ng glucose. That's why merong mga mushroom na uh, tumutubo sa ating mga trees or sa wood. And then, another example would be chitin. A chitin is a linear homopolysaccharide composed of N-acetylglucosamine residues in linkage. So, major structural component ng exoskeletons ng invertebrates, invertebrates katulad ng insects and crustaceans such as shrimp, is chitin. Nag-occur din ang chitin sa cell walls ng algae, ng fungi, and yeast. Ito rin ang second most abundant carbohydrate polymer after ng cellulose. So, yung chitin-based coatings can extend the shelf life of fruits. Yung mga makikintab na something sa uh, surface ng fruits, those are chitin-based coatings. And chitin is also used to make a strong and flexible surgical thread na nagde-decompose after the wound or the incision heals. Now, we'll move on to heteropolysaccharide. So, yung heteropolysaccharide sa bacterial and algal cell walls provide strength and rigidity to cell walls. Yung rigid cell walls synthesize ng bacteria ang nagme-maintain ng cell shape and size and also nagpe-prevent ng swelling or shrinkage ng cell. Example, peptidoglycan. Ito ay isang heteroglycan chain linked to peptide at ang major component ng bacterial cell wall. Composed siya ng N-acetylglucosamine and N-acetylmuramic acid. And nag-alternate silang dalawa. And linked sila through beta-1 for linkages. So yung peptidoglycans natin is classified into two sa, cell, sa bacterial cell wall as gram-positive bacteria and gram-negative bacteria. So, sa gram-positive bacteria, meron siyang thick cell wall, approximately 2 nanometer, at naglalaman ng multiple layers ng peptidoglycan, which surrounds the bacterial plasma membrane. While yung gram-negative bacteria naman natin ay may thin cell wall, may single layer ng peptidoglycan na nakasandwich between inner and outer lipid bilayer membranes. Next one is agarose. Yung agarose is found in certain marine red algae, including some of the seaweeds, specifically sa agar. Isa siyang mixture of sulfated heteropolysaccharide made up of D-galactose and L-galactose. Composed siya ng alternating D-galactose 1, 4, 3, 6 anhydro L-galactose connecting the unit. Useful siya sa biochemistry laboratory because of its remarkable gel-forming property. In terms of heteropolysaccharide, an example would be glycosaminoglycans. So, yung glycosaminoglycans are extracellular heteropolysaccharides. One of the two monosaccharide units nito is a uronic acid and yung isa naman is an acetylated sugar. 
yung mga polymer niyang hyaluronate, chondriotin sulfate, dermatan sulfate, keratan sulfate, and heparin ay nagpa-provide ng viscosity, adhesiveness, and tensile strength sa extracellular matrix ng ating mga cells. So, this table shows the summary ng ating mga polymers such as starch, glycogen, cellulose, chitin, dextran, peptidoglycan, agarose, and hyaluronate. So now, we'll move on to our glycoconjugates, our proteoglycans, glycoproteins, and glycolipids. So, ang glycoconjugates are informational carbohydrates covalently joined to a protein or a lipid. Nagsaserve siya as destination labels for some proteins and mediators ng specific cell-to-cell -cell interactions or interactions between cells and the extracellular matrix. Yung glycoconjugates natin are biologically active molecules. So our first glycoconjugate would be proteoglycan. Macromolecule of the cell surface or extracellular matrix natin yung proteoglycan. One or more glycosaminoglycan chains ang covalently joined sa isang membrane protein or sa isang secreted protein. And yung major components ng connective tissue natin, such as yung cartilage natin, ay maraming covalent interactions with other proteoglycans, proteins, and glycosaminoglycans na nagpa-provide ng strength and resilience. Next naman natin is glycoprotein. Yung glycoproteins natin ay naglalaman ng covalently linked na oligosaccharides na mas maliit but mas structurally complex and therefore more information rich than glycosaminoglycans. And components din siya ng many cell surface or extracellular proteins. Covalently attached oligosaccharides there ang nag influence sa folding and stability of the protein. So, nagpa-provide siya ng critical information about the targeting of newly synthesized proteins and ina-allow niya yung specific recognition by other proteins. We can say that our antibodies are glycoproteins. Yung oligosaccharide por portion ng glycoproteins natin can act as antigenic determinant. So, among the first antigenic determinants discovered ay yung blood group substances. So, in the ABO system, individuals are classified according sa apat na blood types, A, B, A, B, and O. At sa cellular level natin, yung biochemical basis for this classification is a group of relatively small membrane-bound carbohydrates like for type A blood group antigen natin, yung non-reducing end niya is a beta and acetyl galactosamine. While sa type B blood group antigen naman natin is an alpha galactose. So that makes them different. Lastly, we have glycolipids. So yung glycolipids are components of the plasma membrane with covalently attached oligosaccharide chains exposed sa outer surface ng cell, which are hydrophilic or water-loving. Glycolipids din natin act as specific sites for recognition by carbohydrate-binding proteins. Another thing would be yung glycolipids natin ay nagdedetermine din ng blood group. Like, look at the illustration on the right. Sa a antigen natin is yung carbohydrate at the end is made up of an acetyl glucosamine. While sa O naman is wala, while sa B antigen naman is galactose. So, doon natin na determine yung blood group. 